In 2018, there's a plan for, you know, new acreages and, and marginal field uh, licensing. And then, of course, the early license renewals where people with, um, you know, OMLs, you know, bearing over the next three years, the plan is to accelerate those renewals. It's a win-win situation. Government gets in revenues, uh, you know, earlier. But then for those operators, it also takes out the risk of uh, on the, the uncertainty of whether the, the OMLs will be re re renewed. And that, you know, makes it cheap, uh, easier and cheaper for them to, you know, to finance their operations. And then, you know, forward sale arrangements of, you know, government share of some portion of the oil and sold forward, and, you know, and then NLNG dividends, uh, you know, which have been fairly predictable over the years, you know, so some future stream of that is also then being, you know, um, you know, monetized. This to basically in the needed resources to invest in infrastructure that would then, you know, positively impact revenues going forward. The fiscal regime for the PSCs is being, um, you know, reviewed to improve government's take. Um, then we have the restructuring of government's equity in the joint ventures. Today, the average government equity in the joint ventures is 57.5%. The goal here is to bring that average to 40%. But this is not just about the you know, resources that um, you know, will release to government, but this is expected to significantly improve efficiencies as the private sector then takes the lead role in those, um, you know, um, you know, JVs and, and and invest more and, and and you know, basically, ultimately we see that even with a reduced shareholding, that government's revenues will, you know, be, will be better. So then we have increase in excise rates on alcohol and tobacco. I know some people here may not be very happy about it. But we believe that this will challenge the affected operators to even reduce their production and other, you know, costs. Um, the BPE has listed some uh, non-oil assets for privatization and, 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 sorry, not commissioning, concessioning, please, I'm sorry. Uh, and, you know, it's a fairly ambitious program they have for 2018. Um, and we think that Corporate investors, auditors, investment bankers, lawyers, and so on should be very happy with this. The 2018 budget, I'm sure we've all seen the numbers, I won't worry with that, but this says where the money is coming from, it shows you where the revenues are coming from. This shows that in terms of percentages, as I said, oil revenue is 37 uh, percent. That still remains the um, largest uh, chunk of that, then this shows where the money is going, okay? Um, you know. Okay. And then we still have a deficit budget for uh, 2018, a declining deficit, and that's consistent with the, you know, the ERGP, but nonetheless, you know, two trillion naira of uh, deficit for 2018 is, uh, you know, projected. But you can see that's now down to 1.77 percent of, um, you know, uh, GDP. The borrowings, new borrowings, remains the principal source of, um, you know, financing these deficits. But privatization proceeds, that's the non-oil assets that the BP is selling. That's 306 uh, billion naira federal government share. And this doesn't include the 710 billion naira that we expect to get from the reduction in the, you know, the JV uh, assets, which has been included as you know, uh, revenue. Let me now get into what I'm sure most people really want to hear. Remember, I said the five execution priorities of the ERGP, the budget is fully aligned with, you know, the, you know, the ERGP. So what I'm going to do is just take each of those five, um, you know, priority areas and look at, 
you know, the policy thrust of the budget, some uh, provisions included in the budget, and then what this means uh, essentially for, um, you know, you know, for government. So um, the agri sector is one that uh, government is focusing a lot on and has seen some you know, reasonable growth and has been growing even through the period of, of recession at over, you know, 3%. Okay. These are some of the uh, provisions for expenditure in there. But in terms of opportunity, the, you know, the budget envisages development of, you know, value chain ac across 30 different, you know, commodities. And it includes like production, processing, transportation, trading, marketing, exports. And this provides significant opportunities for, um, you know, business. Um, on track, I mean, land leasing arrangements, even land clearing is big business. Our tractorization rate is in our Bismarck. So tractor rentals, is, is, so there's just you know, a lot of opportunities even for research, into better production methods. In terms of ensuring energy efficiency, okay, the goal here is to boost local refining capacity. Government's goal is by the end of this medium term plan period, the 2020, to be self-sufficient, for the country to be self-sufficient in uh, refined petroleum products. Uh, and of course, you know, the power uh, by 2020 to at least have 10,000 megawatts of optimized capacity. This sounds a very tame, uh, you know, a goal. Uh, and some people have accused the ER, ERGP of lacking in ambition when, uh, regarding the power sector. But we think that this is more realistic than the sort of goals that we have had in the past. To get to this, you know, 10,000 megawatts optimized our means you can generate that consistently, you can transmit that consistently, you can distribute that to consumers, you know, consistently. That that's basically, the, you know, you know, you know, the goal. And even to get to that is a very significant amount of investment between now and and 2020. Um, Okay, so of course, you know, the opportunities that that presents for uh, business. But one area of opportunity that even uh, Mr. You know, Branson, who's been talking down Nigeria, you know, since the misadventure of Virgin uh, Nigeria, as he is now talking up is in the investment opportunity in off grid power in Nigeria. Um, okay. These are some of the um, uh, provisions in the budget. Then improving transportation, essentially across the different modes, rail, road, uh, air, they're, they're just need opportunities, the trans infrastructure. You know, you wouldn't believe the impact of, you know, transportation costs. You know, food inflation has been sticky. And, and that's part of what's been holding up the inflation, the inflation rate. Transportation cost is a significant driver of food costs and the, the, the food inflation that we have. So if we make the sort of investments required here, uh, uh, you know, inflation around food will be even lower. So there are just lots of opportunities here, which um, you know uh, this. Driving industrialization, uh, whether it's in manufacturing, solid minerals, you know, there are significant opportunities. The solid mineral sector coming from a very low base is growing, you know, quite significantly. And the new, it's the, there's greater orderliness in that sector now. You know, the policy environment is, you know, more predictable, and it's really a sector that you should, um, you know, take a look at. And then we have the, the special economic zones, which recognizing that in this medium term, we can't fix the infrastructure 
um, you know, generally to the level that business desires, focusing on some of these zones to basically, you know, create the sort of infrastructure that is required. And, and I have here, you know, a list of the places where we're focusing on this. The export expansion grant is being, um, you know, restored. Uh, we believe that the social investment, um, um, you know, program on which the government has been budgeting 500 billion naira a year also provides some opportunities for, um, you know, business, especially also with the new uh, housing uh, program where the intention is to spend 100 billion naira. There are other initiatives on the budget that will impact business in 2018. The Corporate Affairs Commission has moved the entire business registration process online. You know, with, this is time required to register you know, from 10 to 10 to two days. Lagos State has operationalized its e-planning platform and submission of construction permit uh, applications online. These were some of the goals that were agreed between uh, the federal government and Lagos and Kanu that on a number of these indices serve as a proxy for Nigeria. Uh, and it's the progress made on some of these yeah. uh, uh, factors that saw uh, you know, Nigeria do a 24 you know, point leap on the ease of doing business um, you know, index. Immigration, in better, but you're the judge of that. Customs, um, you know, the goal, of course, is to implement the, the custom single window you know, soon, but even ahead of that, they're making some progress in coordinating the cargo examination. TBN is committing to generate stability and predictability. I mean, the central bank actually argues that if they wanted today, uh, the Niger could revalue. <laughs> the wind doesn't seem to listen. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> but essentially, you know, they have opted to go for building up reserves. And so they're buying in the market and buying, and, and, and that's part of what sustained demand. There's a commitment to see greater harmonization of monetary, trade, and fiscal policies in 2018 and forward. Let me conclude by just saying that we expect the initiatives I've outlined, you know, um, basically to support business activities, economic diversification, and inclusive growth through 2018 and um, you know beyond. Um, we expect the 2018 budget to stimulate investment in some critical um, you know sectors. Um, I and mean, the finance sector, we expect to benefit from um, the investments in government securities. Government will conti still continue to borrow, still running a fiscal um, deficit. But also we expect them to profit by servicing manufacturing trade and small businesses. You can see that I singled out the finance sector for sweetening up because as a sector that we think needs to step up, um, you know, uh, and support government's um, um, development objectives more than perhaps they've done in the past. Note, I was introduced as an ex-banker. I speak as an ex-banker who now knows better. <laughs> okay, so we hope that private sector investors will leverage opportunities that this budget presents.